Welcome to this week's Quick Charge. Paul told the Corinthian church, we seem to have nothing, yet we really possess everything. Here, Paul highlights the contrast between a son and a servant. Like the precedent set by Jesus, we are both sons and servants. Jesus manifested as the son of God, but also as the servant of the Lord. He couldn't just be a son, he also had to take on the form of a servant because a servant will go through things and be expected to do things that would be totally foreign and out of bounds for a son. So in this realm, sons are first and servants are last. Jesus said in Luke 17, verse seven, servants don't eat first, the sons and the master's family do. And then in verse eight, he said, servants don't go first. They don't even go second, they go last. Sons are first, servants are last. In Matthew 20, the parable of the workers of the vineyard, Jesus uses a carefully chosen word to describe the main players. He calls them laborers or workers, not servants or sons, because every one of them will make it clear how they see themselves. You'll be able to tell what they think they are by how they react to the purposes and the determinations of the owner. In the parable, some went first and some went last. In chapter 20, verse 10, the Bible says, but when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more. Why? Because they're thinking and acting like sons, but their expectation is much higher than the owner's actions. We should be treated better. We should have it easier. We should be exempt from all of this. We shouldn't have to go through that. In verse number 12, they said, we've borne the burden and the heat of the day. In verse 11, they complained against the landowner. They grumbled. They talked against the owner. They murmured. They protested. The underlying message in that response is, we won't be able to serve the purposes of God in this life without the mentality of a servant. Sons are more likely to complain, to get angry, upset, and protest than servants. When believers get angry at God, it's usually because they're attempting to serve God's purposes in some field with the mentality of a privileged son. They're acting like sons, they're pulling rank, but they've forgotten that they're laboring in his vineyard and not at his throne or at his right hand. Those that were last didn't complain because they had the mentality of servants. The thief on the cross didn't feel like he was a son, so he just received his lot. Servants take it in stride. They expect to sacrifice and give things up for a greater one. They expect to be treated unfairly, unjustly, unreasonably, and to an encounter and endure what's not comfortable, explainable, or sensible. Sons don't. This is why when I take on the form or the mentality of a servant, as Jesus did, even though I am a son, I'm not going to complain or resist or fight or object to what God is asking of me, requiring from me, or marking out for me. As a servant, I expect to be last. I have no cause or place to complain. I'm simply a servant of the Most High God. Remember what Jesus said, the first shall be last. So even sons are not exempt from serving out and facing the work of the vineyard. Do you have that kind of servant mentality? Join me next week for more of Are You Okay With Nothing? God bless.